is that the vast majority of those involved in these gang crimes come from migration backgrounds. A report that was made in 2022 claimed that 85% of the suspects involved in the fatal shootings and other attacks were either born outside of Sweden or had at least one foreign-born parent. Yeah. Two weeks after this hit, Rawa ordered his troops to get ready for new actions against the bandidos, and so they did. On the 28th of March, a young man can be seen running into a gym and downwards onto the staircase. It's evident that he came with a mission. Let's look at the video. Look at this. Imagine this is just a gym. Imagine this is just a gym. This guy over here, he's been saving up three, maybe four years to open his gym. He's doing it the right way. Honestly, the government, fuck the government, my guy. Why aren't they protecting this guy? This is the guy they should be protecting. The business owner. He's just sitting there. He did everything right. That's why I'm saying like sometimes bro, you do everything right and you still get fucked over. You do everything right. I went to school. I did every. They, this is what the government told me to do. If you do all of these things, all of these things, you're going to be successful. Look at that. Look at that. The government doesn't give a shit. This is disgusting. What's up, guys? Welcome to another video. I hope you guys are all doing good. In this video, I want to break down the Kurdish fox. Uh, he's one of Sweden's biggest drug lords. The reason why I want to watch this video is just uh, to give you a little bit more of a Swedish perspective because I'm currently residing in Sweden. And I think I can look at this from a very insider, you know, perspective. Uh, it's very interesting the fact that Sweden has moved from a very safe place to one of Europe's most dangerous countries. Uh, and that has to do, of course, with a lot of immigrants which are coming in. Uh, I'm an immigrant myself, but I would say I am a law abiding immigrant, which uh, yeah, I do what I'm supposed to do. But. Then again, there are other immigrants which uh, go the other route. So without further ado, guys, let's get straight into the video. Sweden is one of Europe's wealthiest nations True. and was one of Europe's most peaceful nations. I emphasize was because times have changed drastically. As of late, oh. Sweden has fallen to an unprecedented wave of violence. The, this is actually true because bombings are happening everywhere in Stockholm right now. You're, you're not safe. Uh, I heard of this story, this guy which was just on his way to the gym and then he just got like three guys just met him up and just like started shooting at him. Uh, and he of course died directly on the spot. And the crazy part about that was, you know, he had nothing to do with the gang violence or anything. He was just, he was just a guy just going to the gym and they, they just mistaked him for somebody else. So yeah, that's... Over the entirety of 2022, mm. there were 391 shootings recorded, yeah. and 2023 was not any different. The month of September 2023 alone saw 11 people become the victim of a fatal shooting. Sweden's prime minister has asked the military to step in as he is seeing no other option to bring back peace to his country. The cause of this all? Feuds between gangs mm. battling for turf to sell their product on. And these aren't your usual gangs of men. These gangs recruit young boys in their teens, some as young as 13 years old, to carry out hits and... You know, I have both sympathy and, I mean, hatred for, for gangsters because, you know, most of us, we, we come to this country and we just want a good life, a better life. Because we come from, like, war-stricken countries and... Like the situation where we come from is is never good, you know. Put this poverty, there's war, and when you get the opportunity to come to a country like Sweden, I think you should use all your opportunities. But you see, the thing is, like, I think it's a double-edged sword because I think the government has also failed most of these immigrants because most of the immigrants. I'm just speaking on a general 
perspective. Like most of the immigrants which come here, they want a better life. And, you know, for maybe it could be so many reasons. It could be racism. It could be uh, language barrier. It could be a lot of a lot of issues. They don't get assimilated into the culture and into the country. And when that happens, they they go the crime route grenade attacks. One man in particular has a strong hand in what is happening in Sweden right now, making him one of the most wanted men in Sweden. This is the story of Rawa Majid, mm. also known as the Kurdish Fox. Rawa Majid was born on the 12th of July in 1986 in Iran to Iraqi parents. His parents fled as the Iran-Iraqi feud was yeah. getting heated. At just a few months old, Rawa arrived in a city named Uppsala together with his family. Uppsala is a smaller city about 70 kilometers from Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. Despite his father slowly disappearing out of the picture, Rawa did well in school as a kid. See? In secondary school, he excelled in classes. That and that's why I say like most of the kids which do come here, they do start off great. They do, it's like, like they get good grades, they, they try to get friends, but this is also the thing which I'm saying, like, as a Swede, right? When you divide, when you say, like, it's us and them, and you, you do it subconsciously or you do it subliminally through media, even, like, getting, like, Swedish friends is very hard in Sweden, right? I have a lot of Swedish friends, or I had, like, when I grew up, I had some Swedish friends and some immigrants was a mixed bag but the thing which I noticed about Swedes is like they're very closed off you know and something which I think would be would be good is if they were more open because sometimes you got to talk to the guy on the bus you know you never know he could be having some weird thoughts but just talk to that guy like hey what's going on like talk to the person because the more and more you talk the more and more people are gonna feel like they're more included in the culture you know it and that's a small, just a small little thing, but it helps a lot. I try to do that all the time when I'm hanging out with people. I try to talk, hey man, uh, hey, how's it going? Just because you never know. Somebody might be sitting on the bus just itching with his Glock, ready to shoot up everybody. And then he's like thinking like, that guy was at least nice to me. I like that guy, you know? So I'm just saying like, that's that's something here, which is really, it's it's really, really bad. Like everyone is like so just cold and don't want to talk to you if you're just if you just say hi to a person on the bus they, they look at you weird and it's like this i don't know you after a while when people look at you in that weird way you also morph into to that and then you're like okay hey if they don't want to talk to me fine and then these groups get created and then it's the swedes against the immigrants and then that's when you start to see crime because the five people you hang out with you become um, so yeah, it's a little bit like that because yeah, once you start just hanging out with immigrants and just people which do all of that and you're not, they're not letting you in, in their secrets because Sweden or Swedes know how to make money. They know how to make a lot of money. They know how to make money legally, but they're ahead. So why would you want to bring in a person, tell them something? Could be maybe like oh you know like instead of doing that you should do that instead of uh, making making all this money on the street you should invest that or yeah we get it you've been on the block you've been doing all that but that's not gonna last you should move move in this way Swedes do not want to give up their secrets you know and that's also something which I learned when I came here you know I I start doing a lot of companies and doing a lot of businesses and. In the beginning, I thought it was very, very difficult. It was very hard because no one would ever share any information, you know? And they, they could see like, shit, this kid is pretty good. Like he's creating apps. He's very, he's very smart. But then they're just, they just keep quiet about it. They're just like, aha, yeah, okay, yeah. And then they keep to themselves, you know? And then you can see like a person literally making millions, right? He doesn't want to give you a piece of the pie. And that's, that is the problem. That is the problem. Yes, it's enough to just bring us here and then segment us or keep us, you know, in the ghettos. But that's not the way to go. That had anything to do with business. 
After finishing his secondary school, he had his own kiosks in Uppsala where he sold food, phone cards and gold. However, his career in crime did not start long after. In 2010, he was sentenced to eight years and six months in prison for several drug offenses. This included handling coke he imported from the Netherlands. Mm. In February 2015, he was allowed early release on parole. He bought his own ice cream parlor in Uppsala, which was a good business move. Not because there were long lines outside the shop, but because he would go on to use it for money laundering. Yeah. Rawa's freedom was short-lived though. Just three months after his release, he violated his probation rules and was jailed once more. In 2018, he was released again, but he had to obey strict rules and was forbidden to leave Sweden. Yeah, but this is the thing which I'm also saying like, even even when a person does a crime here in Sweden, everything is so goody two shoe. There's not really like strict laws. And I had this discussion with my brother and we're saying like, maybe like some of the people which maybe you should have like a three strike program where strike one, you do something illegal, fine, okay. Strike two, then they warn you, they say like, if you do it again, you get to leave the country and you never come back. Because the thing is like, People like this, they ruin it for guys like us, which really want to just be here, just be a law abiding citizen and do what we're supposed to do, do what society has required from us. So I think there should be harsher rules. However, shortly after finishing a sentence, mm. Rawa's cousin was removed off the playing field and he realized that he could very well be next. This led to Rawa being granted permission to leave Sweden despite being under surveillance and on probation. He was allowed to travel to his parents' birth country, Iraq, and eventually registered himself in the birthplace of his mother named Sulaymaniya, a city in the east of the Kurdistan region of Iraq. It must be said that right from his release, Rawa picked up where he left off and started smuggling and selling narcotics again. It wasn't until 2020 that he had emerged as the top drug smuggler of Sweden after police were able to hack into the encrypted messaging database he used. Prior to this hack, Swedish police were unaware of how big Rawa really was in the Swedish smuggling world. But how did he operate? Well, by now, Rawa Majid is better known as the Kurdish Fox, mm. leader of the Foxtrot gang. The core members of the gang are said to consist of Rawa's family members as well as close friends he has known for years. All combined, those are about 10 people, aged between 25 and 35 years old. The core members can be identified by their golden fox rings and chains they wear. The Foxtrot gang mainly focuses on bringing in large shipments of drugs into Sweden to then sell them on to other gangs. They are also notorious because they do not shy away from using excessive violence. Jesus. PGP messages have further revealed that at least since 2020, Majid was in total control of the Foxtrot gang and its business. He was in charge of the couriers that transported the drugs, the foot soldiers, and the people that guarded the stash houses. The hacked PGP messages led Swedish police to inter- Bruh, and they make so much money off this. They're making so much money, I get it. Listen, sometimes I sit and I'm posting videos and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but knowing like, just on the other side of the street, I could probably be making eight times more. Eight, like, it's very tempting. Cause it's like, bro, you, and this is what I'm saying. Like, why don't they make it a little bit easier for us? So we do not have to do this. We, I don't think like people really want to do this. Like, honestly, like you're risking your family's life. People are getting shot. People are getting killed. You, no one really wants to do this, but the money, the amount of money you're making from it, it's crazy. And you, I would say two years in, in this game, you make more money than you ever make in your whole life. So some people, you know, they look at their lives and they're like, okay, if I, if I sit here at this nine to five and I do this for 20 years, I, I won't even make enough. I won't even make enough. But if I just go across the street and just move, I'm just moving a bag from there to there. I may, may be making two, three hundred thousand. That's a, that's a year's income. I don't know. It's just like, yeah, we got police, which is fighting against this, but I don't think 
people really want to solve the problem. Because honestly, if we really wanted to solve the problem, what we would do, maybe, you know, make it, you know, lose the restraints on the taxes or do, do something where like, okay, like, if, if we can get people doing this instead, this would be better. Intensify their investigations in Tarawa. After a year of investigations, they managed to locate him in Iraq. Together with Iraqi police, they set up an operation and raided the house Rawa was supposed to stay in in November 2021. But unfortunately for them, he had just fled, hmm. and all they found was a bunch of mobile phones. The fox was gone. It was immediately speculated that Rawa had the right contacts in Iraq, and that he was warned prior to the raid that he had to move. Right after this raid, Rawa relocated to Turkey. It remained quiet around him for just a few months, but then, in March 2022, his name would pop up again, this time in relation to a feud between his foxtrot gang and the Bandidos, another gang in Sweden. Reason for the feud? Two large shipments of drugs that were seized by Swedish police on February 11th and 14th. This feud would go on to have serious consequences. Just two weeks after the seized shipments, the Bandidos clubhouse was shot at. Nonetheless, this was nothing compared to what was about to come. It would go tit for tat, with some of the most notable actions being that of the 4th of March, where an innocent barber was removed off the playing field. The man drove in his white Mercedes near the Bandidos clubhouse as 17-year-old okay, Peter that. Hassan Hagi stopped- 17-year-old. 17-year-old. <sighs> They're using kids, because kids can do all of this and not even get prison. That's how it is. They'll go to juvie, then they're out. Kids. You want something more. You know, you want something more for this. You want something more for your country, more for your society, more. If somebody were to tell me, like, this was my brother, he got shot up, bro, that would be crazy. This could have been my brother. Cousin, whatever. Brother, street life, I, I get it. It's very enticing. Oh, it's very, it, it lures you in. And then, oh my God, it's danger, this and that. I get, I get that, bro. But being alive, being on this earth, that think you can go to Bali. You could be in Bali for six, seven, eight years, just chilling, just creating companies, doing like, doing something. Instead of all of this, peace of mind, guys. That's 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 where I'm at right now. I may be grown, and I'm not saying like, bruh, I've, I've, I'm not saying I'm a perfect person, but I'm just saying like, bruh, you learn. That's that's not the life you want to live. And even if I had kids, bruh, who would who would want their kids to be around this? People getting shot up. This is just a normal barber. I'm just cutting hair. Bam, the guy's dead. Do you know how do you know how it feels like when people are passing? Like I think like people don't really understand that. Maybe people haven't experienced that. There's there's no honor in that. There's no honor in going to kill somebody's family, shooting them up. I watch this, bro, and it just it makes me sick. Sick to my stomach. Sick. And the 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 thing which I hate about Sweden is also like there's most of the people here are also like super nice nice it's almost like the country of nice guys nice guys finish last if people are doing all of this shit cast them out cast out the bad apples i have no problem with that but if you're doing some you're doing some shit i'm snitching like before i was like no i'll never snitch yes on my family if it's if, if these are my like if these are the people which i I grew up with this is this is my family this is my family but niggas I've never known niggas from the block these there's no loyalty among thieves and you're sitting there oh yeah I would never snitch bro that shit is corny as fuck I want to I want to live my life I want to reach 40 if I can I want to have kids I want to be like David Beckham
have a football team. Oh yeah, oh that, oh what's that do? Oh yeah, you know, oh th that is oh, signing some papers. Oh we're moving some the bra I want that's the life that I want to have. Oh where's dad? Oh yeah, he went to the store. He he's buying some some decorations for Christmas. Bro, if you do all of this, you don't have Christmas. You're constantly just thinking, when are they when are they coming for me? Oh fuck, I need to do this. And you can never get out of this. You can never because they look at it like, okay, he can snitch on us. He knows all the information. Once you get in, you can never get out. Never. You have to flee the country. I don't know. That's that's not that's not life, my guy. And it's so stupid because I'm like, if people just understood, if they just understood what a precious like what a precious gift we got from God. What this shit is so precious and it's so quick. Bam, it's gone. Oh yeah, I I was sitting in a jail cell for all of my life. That shit is corny, my guy. I, nah, I find that shit corny, man. I'm not, I'm not, not, nothing against anybody which does this. I get it. That's, that's your path. And you have to do what you have to do. But, bruh. And no, no one is even talking about it. Stopped next to him and riddled him with bullets. Police suspected the victim to be innocent. Though they think the hit was aimed at someone of the bandidos mm. who also drove a white Mercedes. Interesting to note is that the vast majority of those involved in these gang crimes come from migration backgrounds. A report that was made in 2022 claimed that 85% of the suspects involved in the fatal shootings and other attacks were either born outside of Sweden or had at least one foreign-born parent. Yeah. Two weeks after this hit, Rawa ordered his troops to get ready for new actions against the bandidos, and so they did. On the 28th of March, a young man can be seen running into a gym and downwards onto the staircase. It's evident that he came with a mission. Let's look at the video. Look at this. Imagine this is just a gym. Imagine this is just a gym. This guy over here, he's been saving up three, maybe four years to open his gym. He's doing it the right way. Honestly, the government, fuck the government, my guy. Why aren't they protecting this guy? This is the guy they should be protecting. The business owner. He's just sitting there. He did everything right. That's why I'm saying like sometimes bro, you do everything right and you still get fucked over. You do everything right. I went to school. I did every. They, this is what the government told me to do. If you do all of these things, all of these things, you're going to be successful. Look at that. Look at that. The government doesn't give a shit. This is disgusting. From the Swedish government, this is disgusting. Why are you allowing this? What, like, honestly, if I was running the country, if I was running Sweden, bro, things would be strict. I don't give a damn who you are. If I was, if I was the, if I was running this shit, bro, you could, you could not do this. Like, I'm, I'm saying that you can't do this in Russia. You, you can't, you, you as a person, you can't do this in Russia. You can't just go around shooting. This is, that's why I'm saying like people here, they feel like they can do anything. If I was running this country. You couldn't do this to a business owner. If we found out who you were, to a business owner. Bruh. It's pretty stupid. Why even go down? Look at that, bro. Look at 
Look, he doesn't even know where he's going. <laughs> the young man could be seen going downstairs into the gym area. Here is where he struck someone, and you can see bystanders running up the stairs in total panic. Shortly after, the shooter also ran up the stairs again. He even tried to escape through the wrong door before someone guided him in the right direction. His mission? To remove a highly ranked Bandidos member that was also in the gym. The end result? He struck Frederick, a totally innocent man who did See? not survive. See the what hitter... I'm saying? It's a child. Struck a person which had nothing to do with... Like, I'm just at the gym. Is, aren't you, aren't you Hari's brother? No, bro, I don't know who Hari is. I've never even met Hari. You're Hari's brother. Bam, bam, bam. Like, bro, what, what did that man do to deserve that? What, he, he, bro, he probably had kids, grandkids. Bro, he just went to the gym. Bro, that's, oh my God, that shit is so fucking unfair, my guy. He just went to the gym. Oh, I'm just going to go to the gym. Hey, you know what? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to go over to the gym, train a little bit. Bam, you get shot up. For what? For what? And these are immigrants which are doing this. These are fucking... Bro, honestly, I love I love my fellow immigrants. I am I'm an immigrant myself. But, bro, guys, guys, this is not the way. This is not the wave, my guy. Why can't we why can't we be known for something else? Oh yeah, hey, you know, did you hear what Yambo did? He made music. At least at least I'm doing music or hey, did you he made a movie or he did like you're not going to hear Swedish people doing this. This are just immigrants. Just just immigrants. And I have to call it out as well. Because at the end of the day, bro, this is our people. This is just like, just like I come from a different country. This guy comes from a different country. Has probably a similar story, similar background as I have. It's a kid. And the fact that the government is allowing this. And they're not even like, okay, hey, this has gone overboard right now. We need to sit down. We have to have a meeting and... I don't give a damn about the military, bro. Laws, regulations. If we find out that something like this happened, there are going to be strict, harsh consequences. In Dubai, all of these countries, you won't, you can't do this in Dubai. You, you can't do this in Dubai. You can't. Nice guys finish laugh. Sweden is the nice guy. Oh yeah, come in. Oh no, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. I'll bring in your guns. Bring yes, sh go around, shoot. Bro, it's a playground. Bro, the guy's going bam, bam, bam. A playground because he feels comfortable. There are no consequences. You see, the thing is, if we found out that you were doing this, if we found out, like, if it was, if this was Russia, bro, if this was Russia was just 16 years old when he did it. While all this was happening, Rawa himself remained at bay in Turkey. However, he would get in serious trouble himself too. In April 2022, Ali Eren was doing his job as a gardener in the Turkish city of Marmaris when he came across a pouch that someone had left behind. Upon opening it, Ali found bundles of cash stuffed inside the pouch. Despite making a meager salary as a gardener, Ali did not take this chance to pocket the money for himself. No, he decided to inform the police. At the station, they had counted multiple currencies with over $12,000 in total value. After checking the security cameras located near the park, police managed to identify a man called Miran Otaman. They invited Miran to the police station to pick up the pouch, which Miran of course gladly did. He introduced himself as a shipping tycoon and left behind $400 as a reward for Ali. But police had a weird feeling about this Miran Otaman. They decided to run his ID through all their databases and discovered that this was not Miran Otaman. This was an internationally wanted man. A man that had an Interpol red notice out for him. 
The man who they had in front of them was actually fugitive Rawa Majid, not Miran Otaman. After further investigation, Turkish police raided Rawa's villa, where they found unlicensed weapons, large sums of cash, and luxury items, such as designer clothes, watches, and more. He had rented the villa with the same fake passport. During his first questioning, Rawa said that he was surprised that he got caught. I had a very high quality and well-designed fake passport. I never thought I would get arrested when I went to that police station. Was this the end to his story? Was one of Sweden's most wanted criminals finally caught and ready to be extradited? Well, no. Rawa had purchased Turkish citizenship via hmm. Turkey's Golden Passport program for approximately $400,000 in 2020. Turkey has become a safe haven for criminals as they are able to purchase citizenship by investing the aforementioned amount into real estate in the country. Although Sweden, along with Interpol, has requested for his extradition, Turkish authorities have refused to do so for two reasons. Reason number one is his Turkish citizenship, and number two is because Sweden has refused to extradite people to Turkey whom Erdogan identified as terrorists. Rawa's extradition has become a political game. To make matters worse for Swedish authorities, Rawa was released by Turkish police a few weeks after his arrest and is now essentially a free man again. Oh, and after all this, Ali got a reward for his honesty. Keeping the pouch might have been a better option afterwards. In April 2022, right when Rawa was jailed in Turkey, Swedish police shared an extensive police report about Rawa Majid and his Foxtrot gang with the aim to help Turkish intelligence prosecute Rawa. Information such as their suspected locations, pictures of them and what they are being accused of, and more evidence. It was part of Operation Yilan. The report was labelled highly confidential and was only allowed to be read by certain police officials. Little did they know was that the document was leaked back to Rawa and his associates. Late in 2022, they arrested a suspect of the Bridge Network, another Swedish gang. Upon further investigation, they found a silver iPhone. After taking a closer look at this iPhone and going through its contents, they found the highly confidential report they had made to help Turkey. Someone had leaked it. Swedish police immediately rang the alarm and called this leak extremely serious. A Swedish official suspects a Turkish government official of leaking the document. Guys, let me end this video with a story, right? So I was traveling, this was two years ago. I'd been gone a year. I came back, right? And there's like these storage units where, you know, I have some of my computers, hard drives, like a lot of things, right? So I had the storage unit. I'd come there, leave my computer, lamps, this, like a lot of things, just like technical things, put them in, lock them in, right? Somebody broke in to the storage unit and they just took out like bags bags of my things like was jackets like it was a jacket worth so much like what close to maybe eight thousand swedish crowns i had my computer like a hard drive with so much music on it i had a lot of things a lot of things right and i remember talking to like because they had like surveillance cameras in the storage unit hey can't you guys check out the surveillance cameras yeah we could see the people which took the things. We could see the people carrying the things out. Like I, you could see in plain sight. I'm thinking it's a closed case. They're going to get these people, right? So I make a police case, right? And uh, the police, I, we're going to look into it, right? Do you have the video? Yeah. Okay. Goes three weeks, four weeks. I'm like, yeah, the guy's still waiting. You guys can go and, and get the video. Okay, yeah, we're going to do that. Six weeks, eight weeks. Are you guys going to... Yeah, we, we have a lot to do right now. We don't have uh, that time, but we're going to... We don't have that much time, but we're going to get to it. Okay. And now they have like this... This limit, like it's... I think it's like a three months limit of like storage which they have in their system, right? So then they're like, you have to come this week. Otherwise, the system will automatically take away the files, okay? And we can't give them to you because these... It has to do with like... These are case files and it's only the police which can get the the, the original files. I said, okay. 
I talk to the police one more time. I say, this is the last week. Um, aren't you guys going to go there and at least get the footage? I get a letter in, in the mail from the police. Oh, because we don't have enough evidence, we're going to have to cancel this case. So I phone up one of the police officers and I'm like, we're just connected to the case. And I'm like, we had the people going in and out. You could see their faces. What more evidence do you need? I don't understand. Like what, what more evidence do you, oh no, right now we have, we, we're working on a lot. I get it. You're working on, but that is a, it's a simple case. You just go, Oh, you look, okay, so this person did that. Oh, that's that's how they look like. You look through the database. This could have taken them less than a day to solve. Less than a day. And my, I could see as they're lifting my things out and there's nothing that I could do about it. So I say that to say this. The police in Sweden have, they've just lost it. I don't know why they don't want to go after some of these criminals. But think of this, right? If you do not even feel protected in your own country by the people which are supposed to protect you, then why are you working? Why are you paying taxes? Why are you doing all of that? So the way that I view it is the police are just like the mafia. And especially here in Sweden, the police now have become the mafia. You can either pick, you either go with these guys where you're going to get fucked or you go with the police where you're going to get fucked, but you can't protect yourself. That's why I, at least what you can say about America, at least if somebody comes into your house, you have the right to shoot them. You have the right to send them to Christ. Here in Sweden, a person can come and they can take your shit, take your belongings, things that you've been working your whole life for. And the police were just like, oh, we're not really interested at, at the At the moment, we have too much. Like, doesn't matter if you have too much to do. I, as me as a citizen, I have the right to, I, I should have some rights. But that is just me at least ranting a little bit about, like, the failed society that Sweden has become. And, you know, Trump was talking about, look at what's happening in Sweden. Trump was right. Look at what's happening. Look at what's happening. In this was the greatest country on earth. Greatest. Now look at it. A person so comfortable he can take his Glock and walk around and just shoot on a playground. On a playground where there's kids. Where there's and bruh, and you're just like, think of me like if I was a father. And I heard like, oh my, your 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 son was shot on a playground. Okay, yes. And what what are they doing about it? Oh, they're not really doing anything. They they just allowed the the man to go free. Wait, he killed my son, and he's just going free. That just think of it, like think of it seriously. The way that I view it is just like, bro, this is right now in this Sweden has just become a clown world. <laughs>